Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing the Get Good at Blender series, but continuing with the theme of I create it and then you have a go and then I show you how I did it. But this time I'm going to show you a few items that you can slot together to build some nice low poly scenes. So within this particular video, there'll be tips and tricks for creating low poly scenes and easy ways of giving items a bit of character. Do remember to check out the description for lots of different playlists for different courses. After this one, I'll be moving on to more hard surface modeling. So if you want to continue the low poly style and practice that before going on to the hard surface modeling, then do check out those playlists again. Do check out the website as well. And do check out my channel's playlist in general. There's lots of courses on there for low poly modeling. Okay, so here's the first object, have a look. Now the tip for this one is the array modifier. If you don't know about that, don't worry, you don't have to build such a big stone wall. So have a go at that. Okay, so a nice easy starter there, and generally in this episode, there won't be anything too taxing. There may just be a few new elements that you hadn't thought about. So let's move this across to one side, G then Y. Move my cursor to the center with Shift C, and Shift A to add, let's add a cube. So I'm going to go straight into edit mode with tab, into my object with period key on the numpad, and then Control B to bevel. Then just move your mouse from side to side, and you'll see the bevel happen. You've got different options over here if you need to, but this is just fine as it is. Now I can come up here with my proportional editing, make sure that's turned on, O is the shortcut for that, and then just grab a few elements and pull them around. Remember with the proportional editing, if I press G, I can change the circle of influence by using the wheel of my mouse. So just giving that bit of distortion as you can see here, you may even, if I go back to edit mode, want to drag some of these out a bit, so GG to edge slide. As soon as you press GG, you might have proportional editing on, but it will ignore it. Just be careful of things like that, it looks a little bit unusual, so try not to have any sort of dinks in there at all. Okay, so a nice easy stone there. Now to create some other ones of different size, I'll just go to top view for a moment, Shift D to duplicate, back into edit mode and wireframe. So Z on your keyboard to go to wireframe is the quick way, or you can go up here. So I can select one half, G then X, and make it into a bigger stone. Now I can move all these different things around again to give it a bit more variety from the other one, or I can just go into object mode. I'll just go into solid mode again so you can see it a bit easier. R, Z, 180, flip it around, G then X, and move it to the other one. And that's a great way of adding a bit of variation to your rocks rather than remodeling them, just turn them around and when they're stacked together, they don't look too bad. Although these ones do look a bit uniform. Let's duplicate this one with Shift D, move it across on the X axis and let's actually modify this one this time. So I've still got proportional edit on. I can press G to grab, move a few bits around and perhaps a few more edge slides to make it a lot more wonky. You could even have three different sizes as well. So back into wireframe mode. This is obviously in edit mode still. G then X and move that across a bit. So we've got three different sizes to work with. Okay, so the quick way to make a brick wall like this is obviously the array modifier as I was talking about earlier. It's a nice easy one really. So let's make sure they're nice and close together. So I'll just go to top view here and move them fairly close. I'll give them a bit of character though. Can you see that I'm making sure they're not quite in line, making it have that organic, natural feel of a stone wall, maybe even rotating this one a tiny bit. And that gives it a bit more of a natural look. The more character you add, the more you'll notice it though when you repeat it in the array modifier. Now in order for the array modifier to work, they all need to be one object. So let's select them all and press Control J to join, Control J. Now they're all one object, so I can go into edit mode and you can see that if I use the proportional edit on this, it will affect all of it. So we know that they're all one object. There is slight overlap, but don't worry too much about that. So let's try the array modifier. So over to the spanner, add modifier, and the array is at the top of generate. And you can see instantly it adds another three to the end. I'll give you a quick rundown of the controls. You can see that there's fixed count at the top here. That's the easiest one to use, so I'm gonna keep it on that and not worry too much about the others. But we can increase the count just here. So about four looks good. Now the relative offset, you can play with these things and figure it out for yourself, but hopefully that makes a lot of sense that you've got an offset between them. The default is one in the X axis. So if you wanted this to go in the Y axis instead, you could change this to zero and this to one. 
and it will go in the Y axis. Or there's the Z axis here with one as well. I'm going to do the X axis for now. So I'm going to change it back to its default. And in order to do what we've done here, we need another array modifier on top of this one. So add modifier array, but instead of X, we change it to the Z. So I'll change that to zero and change the Z to one. And you can see it piling up there. But now I can actually change the X axis to give it that stone built look. So I can press perhaps 0.3 in here. Actually, no, that's too far. Maybe 0 0.03 is what I meant to say. And that looks a bit better than this wall, to be honest. And that was to do with the fact that I added a bit of character elements. We can then increase the count and create a few more. But unfortunately, that's not working how I'd like. And we're starting to see that uniformity. So let's bring that back down to two. I'll minimize this one and this one as well. So we've got two array modifiers, one going in this direction and one going that direction. I'll add another one. And this is going to be in the Z axis again. So I'll put this X down to zero again and the Z axis up to one. And there we can see they're kind of on top of each other. And I can adjust the X axis slightly again. We need about 0 0.03 again. And in fact, I want minus 0 0.03, so it goes the other way. Maybe a touch more to give it more variation. 0 0.05, I think it's going to look good. OK, so don't worry too much about the ends. I'll talk about those in a moment. But you can see how we can build up a brick wall like this so that you can start thinking about making some buildings in that fun low poly style. OK, so here's the next one for you to model. Again, using the array modifier. But think about how I can create that tiny notch there. So have a go at that. OK, so hopefully another fairly easy object for you. But again, building up this idea of being able to make low poly landscapes and environments. Let's go to top view. And I'll just move my cursor over here and add a cube. I'll just bring it up as well so we can see it. So I'll scale this now, scale in the Z, scale in the X, until we get a sort of plank shape that's similar. I'll press full stop on my numpad to zoom in a bit, scale in the Z and the X a bit more, and that's about the right shape. Now it's probably a good idea to set my scale here, so Control A and set the scale. Now lots of people have been saying to me that why do I have to press Control A all the time? It's really frustrating. Well, what you can do instead is add an object, let's say a cube, and go straight into edit mode and start scaling in the Z and scale in the X, and it will retain its scale of one because you've done all that in edit mode. The only thing you have to look out for when you're doing that, if you're moving it about, your origin point is not in the center anymore. But you can easily move your origin point by going to object mode, right click and set origin. Origin to geometry will send it to the center. Anyway, for now, I'll go to the beginning one because that's more the shape I want. Back into edit mode, the quick and easy way to make a plank, in my opinion, control R for a loop cut down the middle, wheel mouse so you've got two loop cuts and then double left click. Remember that you've got options down here if you want to change anything. And then just find any random angle and press R to rotate. And then we've got a bit of rotation and bit of distortion in our wood. And then maybe grab some of these ends and just add that tiny bit of variation. OK, so that will do for one plank. Let's duplicate that and press Y to move it across and just edit the shape very slightly. So maybe grab one of these loop cuts and rotate it a bit more. OK, so that's one more variation of plank. One more over here and I'll create the notch in this one. So for the notch, it's a good idea to do a loop cut down the middle. And then with this vertex and this one at the bottom here, we can press GG to edge slide and slide it up to the end there. So they're quite close to that one. And then with the knife tool, K, we can cut polygons into here. So can you see how it changes to have a red circle around the green square? That means it's sort of snapping to a vertex. And that's a good idea to cut from a vertex. So let's cut from this one. So left click to cut. And then you can see it creating a cut there. Then when I go to an edge, the edge turns light green and it snaps to that edge. And that's a good place to put another cut. And then follow my way around. You can actually use the middle mouse button with this tool. Go to the next edge and then back in to that vertex. And again, it highlights red when I do that. And then once you're finished, you press enter. And now I have a new cut. Now I can go to face mode with three and delete these faces. And then to fill in these faces, I can press two to go to edge mode, select two faces like this and press F. Or you can just press the very end edge like this and press F. And often that fills in gaps for you. I'll just adjust this edge slightly. So G then shift Z so it doesn't grab in the Z axis. And then just move that in. 
and there we have a nice notch. Okay, so let's go to top view and move these together a little bit more, maybe off to the side slightly, like so, and maybe a bit of rotation there to give them that organic feel. I'm going to duplicate this one again, Shift D, rotate in the Z 180, so it's pointing the other way, move that into there, and just adapt the shape very slightly. It's best to do this in wireframe mode, then I can get the vertices the other side as well, and then I can make this notch a bit bigger, like this. A bit of variation there. Okay, back to solid mode, and we've got our planks. Let's join them together, so Control J, up to the array modifier, and it's going the wrong way, so this time it's in the Y, so zero on the X, and let's choose the Y instead, and the Y with one, that looks pretty good. It's got a bit of a gap there, but that again gives it that nice organic feel. So I can up the count as much as I like and get a nice set of planks. Now I want you to have a go at creating some wooden posts. So create three wooden posts and have a look at the variation that I've got within them. This one's got a notch on it and this one's got a kink in the corner. I'm not sure I'm using the correct terms, but you know what I mean. So have a go at creating some posts like that. That should be fairly straightforward now. Okay, so hopefully that was fairly easy. The one thing that may have caught you out slightly is creating this little kink, notch, whatever you call that, in the corner. So let's go to top view quickly, shift A to add, and then a cube. I'll scale it in the Z, so it's just somewhere around there, that's fine. Now control A, because I didn't do that in edit mode, so control A and then set the scale. Into edit mode now, control R and a couple of loop cuts and rotate. You can make it dance a bit, or you can give it that slight organic feel. Then we can just grab a face at the top and rotate that slightly, maybe at the bottom, but generally they sort of stick into the ground with low poly work, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Okay, so how do I create that notch at the end here? Well, into vertex mode, select a vertex and press Control B. Move your mouse to the side slightly and then press left click. Now nothing's happened, but what you can do is come across to here and tick vertex only, and then you can see the changes it's made. Then you just change the width manually here and you can create a notch. So there's that. Okay, so I'll show you how you can create that split again, very quickly, Shift D to move this one across, into edit mode, full stop on my numpad to zoom in, and Control R to create a loop cut. I'll cut a notch into here again. Now notice I'm snapping to the edges, but I'm not worried about snapping to any vertices at the moment. So I'll just create this cut and press Enter, and then I'll create another one down the middle here, and press Enter, and then I will move this back like this and that's created a split now what you will see because of these end gons if I move this edge down now it will create some slight distortion can you see how it changes and basically blenders putting a triangle in there when it renders as you can see when I move around so what we ideally need to do is to create some triangles here in this case we don't have to worry too much these edges are flat and the triangle it's creating here is sensible. But it's a good idea in case it decided to do a triangle in a different direction and you didn't realize and it caused some unusual rendering. So we can select two and press J to join. And we could do the same here, but we could just grab this one, GG, and slide it up to the other one. And then we've got better topology. However, you can see some slight shading anomalies there so you may want to grab two of these and press J it doesn't make too much difference really and the other side so select two vertices and press J okay so there's some wood with notches splits and bit of character so now if I bring back my other objects I've also got this sort of ruin idea here and that's fairly easy to create something like this now with our wall we've got here and maybe we can combine it with some platforms that you can see here to make a sort of castle building structure of some sort or you could just combine it with the wood to make wooden floors so your challenge will be to make some sort of building a few hints and tips so this wall for example let's uh, grab it and move it across to the side and create a new ruin down here now I find the easy way for this is to actually apply the modifiers at this stage remember this is destructive when you apply a modifier you can't go back and then start changing things but if I apply this modifier and apply each of the modifiers. Oh, I'll just undo that and mention something. It's always important to apply your modifiers from the bottom. So that's the first modifier it sees and you won't get any error messages. So if I apply this one, but if I try and apply this one now, you'll get some distortion here and applied modifier was not first, results may be something or other. So I'll undo that and remember to go from the top downwards and then it will stay the same as what it looks like in your viewport. 
Okay, so the problem I have is that they're all one object like this when I go to edit mode, but an easy way to separate them is press A to select all and P to separate by loose parts. Now they're all separate objects. If I go back to object mode, I can now select them individually. So I can make another wall over the other side. If I go to top view, shift D, R, Z90, and then just pull them together like this. We can tidy this up a bit and change the different stones we've got on the end here, for example, and then move them in together. And again, you can tidy this all up. The only slight problem you'll have with this is that when you separate like this, if I try and use something like circle select to paint the bottom here, it's not selecting them. But as soon as I hit the origin, it selects all of them. That's because all the objects share the same origin point. So we might want to right click, set origin, or origin to geometry, and they'll all be back to where they were. Now when I go to C to circle select, I can select these bottom stones and then move them in the correct axis. Okay, so now you should have enough to create your own low poly building, ruin or interesting structure. Have a go and let me know how you get on on the Discord server or any other way you'd like. Do remember the other playlists for the low poly well, the C shack scene, if you want to continue practicing with your low poly work. Next session we'll be going on to hard surface modeling and slightly more complex individual shapes. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.